Hey team. Welcome back to Starcom. The unknown sector. Last time about we had started exploring. But I uh got my ass beat left and right. As it were. Not quite sure what the wings do, but it's better than nothing, right? I'm just trying to put on as much HP as possible. And away we go. Oh, you know what? I did want to switch to fly towards Courser. Let's do that and that. And all right. So Strafe is on A and A D, which I don't really have much strafing potential, so that doesn't matter. Does it fly towards cursor? Yeah, it did. Orient towards the cursor. That feels better for some reason. Let's explore this uh, place and see what we find. Well, you don't look like you're blasting me off the cuff, so that's probably a good sign. Erm Year Captain. Halt. This area is off limit to unauthorized vessels. Depart immediately. All right, Rhino Bro. Your Jadoon ass. The doctor called. He wants to know why you're not upholding the Shadow Proclamation. Perhaps we can reach some peaceful arrangement where we can conduct a scientific survey. Are you suggesting a bribe? <laughs> An Ermir surety is payable, but in blood. I warn you again, do not land on this planet. The translation pre-filter matrix shows wordplay signifiers. It's possible some portion of that comment was not literal. We may be able to negotiate if we find out what they want. What do you know about uh, the ships with red and yellow markings? They are very recent arrivals to this region. Like the Pikyak fly, they are annoying in small numbers. In large numbers, they will pick your carcass clean. Alright, so we're not allowed to land on that planet. Yet. The anomaly detected from orbit is the wreck of a Starliner. The impact at the surface destroyed most of the salvage, but in a reinforced hold, the team finds several crates of copper and a damaged data log. It's too badly corrupted for the Universal Translator to form a complete matrix, but it was able to piece together the last few entries. Taking delivery of copper for Ermir to engage their absence. 
have been attacked while en route, destroyed two ships, but engines now redlining, emergency landing. So the Ermir, like copper. Good to know. Combat? Confused. We need your services to help deal with these red raiders. You have copper as payment. Ah, I see. Our mutual friend did not describe your vessel accurately at all. We will summon the, the fleet and dispatch this pestilence from the region. I will trust you not to try to land on this planet in our absence. How far do you think they have to be away? Before I can land on it. Good enough? Hopefully. The lander touches down a few hundred meters from an enormous pyramid. Its sides are segmented into irregular protrusions. Penetrating radar shows there's some interior cavities, but no obvious way in. The team spends a considerable amount of time circling the pyramid and investigating its various facets before Cadet Kepler notices an opening in a face that the team had definitely investigated before. The pyramid's door relies on temperature differential, differential with the outside. Gradual warming causes hydraulics to expand, opening the door. Perhaps it was designed to open automatically at dawn. Examination of the door reveals it possesses sensitive hydraulic levers that expand at a certain equilibrium of temperature and pressure in the environment. The pyramid's interior is quite small relative to the outside. The team finds display of various relics suggesting a juxtaposition of pre-industrial civilization without electrical or advanced power supplies, yet whose artifacts have an incredibly high level of engineering and mathematical precision. One item in particular has incredible detail. Enigmatic shapes. Some of our command crew are now experienced enough for a promotion, you can assign their skill points from the crew screen. Every team member automatically gain one proficiency point in their expertise. You additionally have six free promotion points to distribute however you deem. I figure we just keep bumping the specialization. An intricate set of nested movable polyhedra. On deeper analysis, there are movable parts within movable parts, down to a remarkably small scale. These seem to rule these seem to be rules governing how the interlocking shapes can move, like a puzzle game. This puzzle object is quite complex from a geometrical standpoint. Maybe Dr. Rama would be interested in taking a look at it. Maybe. combat cues. Premier Defender. Holy shit, no thanks. 
Where may your defender bro please help? Oh god. Bro. You think we got this? Two on fifty bullshit? That we might. Yeah, boy, wiping them out. He's got some heavy guns. He's got that big ball, them big green balls of plasma. Oh shit, more friendly showing up. Hell yeah, let's go, son. We got friendly rhinos. English rhinos. Hey, we have some of the good good. Y'all guys are tough as shit. Y'all need to take it all. fighting them for it. Is that a fixed gun part? Oh, fixed accelerator. towards that thing. No, it's my titanium, damn it. Annihilate the red pickyak with us. This was an entertaining contract. Your copper is uncorroded. Watch this planet, shatter this diplomat, deliver this artifact. Such dull chores. More copper, but more dull. Various factions likely have different base preferences for resources, as well as preferences driven by their current supply. 
You can see a reminder of how much resource we need to build a module by hovering over the resource icon. Okay. Okay. Looks like there's a destroyer left. Maybe we can get the gun out of him if we're quick enough. Or not. What looked like a small spaceport from low orbit turns out to be a fully auto automated manufacturing facility. Tracked robots carry ore from nearby hills into a refinery connected to the main structure. Partially assembled Red Raider drone is being assembled on the pad. Judging from the erosion patterns around the ore mines, this place was idle for a long time and only recently restarted activities. Investigate the facility. Lee reconnoiters the area and plans out a path that will allow a quick retreat. But the caution seems to have been unnecessary. The facility, oddly, has no ground defenses. After gaining entry, the team is able to explore freely. The process that creates the drone parts is very advanced. It's probably capable of automating almost any machine production. The complex is old, but well maintained by robots of scarce sentience, who ignore the team's movements from the inside, they can see process ore turned into advanced ship components. With the team's unfettered access to the system, it seems like it should be simple to shut down production. Ensign Gleese identifies the main controller system. After a bit of tinkering, the machine stops. With the production halted, the team is able to help themselves with the process ore. That's a relief. Hopefully we'll see fewer of these Red Raiders now. Maybe. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Accelerator coil for a fixed plasma weapon. Part of the fixed plasma weapon, similar to our turrets. But designed for fixed gun with longer ranges and more power. That's what I'm after. I'm after the range. Range dictates all... Gas giants are usually 99% hydrogen. This giant is mostly helium, suggesting that this planet underwent partial fusion at some point. How? What would it go undergo partial fusion? I just go, eh, I don't want to be a star right now. I'm taking a nap. This planet is only 60% of the mass its size and composition would suggest due to a high number of voids in its mostly solid core. All right, that clears out this area. And I think we need, what, one more part for the fixed gun? The further we get from gravitational disturbances like planets, stars, and other vessels, the faster our engines can propel us. It's known as the void distortion effect. Well, I'm trying to void distort my ass over here real quick. Tell you what.
Oops. In explored systems with no hostiles, I can create an optimized void solution for our engines. Cool. Eons ago, some geological event thrust iridium deposits up to the surface. Wind and erosive forces have carried away all but the hardest stone, leaving a few rich nodes. The team lands in a small clearing on the edge of a vast forest that spans much of the planet's temperate region. Biosignatures are so strong and diverse, it's not immediately clear what tripped the anomaly, anomaly detection algorithm. But the signal was quite strong. Eh, we'll hold off on that. Assuming that flinger is going to take us over here somewhere and then it's going to lead us back up and we'll make a nice little pentagon Gate, let me go. It's trying to suck me back in. Oh, I want that. Mere Defender. just to make sure it leads up there and not something in between like the other side did. Wreckage from a ship with a now familiar red and yellow markings is scattered across the desert floor. Besides some aluminum, the debris is mostly unremarkable. Based on this debris, these red ships are likely autonomous drones.
This planet was home to a late pre-industrial civilization in the last 300 to 800 years, based on radiological dating, a mere blink in geological time scales. There are plentiful sources of text in the Universal Translator, or for the Universal Translator. The dominant theme is the imminent return of a celestial emissary. Description of it vary, although a consistent element is a long blue trailing veil suggesting it could be a comet. The latest surviving texts are confusing, making it difficult to discern between religious belief and scientific observation. The textual record is incomplete, but it appears the civilization collapse was very close to the arrival of the emissary. There was a dramatic polarization of culture as to whether it was a good or bad omen. Linguistic conflict symbols suggest culture might have been collapse, might have been starting to collapse before the emissary arrived. try to hunt down some of these uh, these um, red raider things what was that some blue over there the emissary well that sure as hell isn't a comet our sensors are having a hard time getting data on this object, creating a strange warp field in its wake, distorting our readings. Yeah, you don't say. Created. I like how you can kind of cheese it on the map by just opening and closing it. So it created a hole in space. Ah, it's bright. Very interesting. The warp metrics of this wormhole we just passed through matches the one that brought us to this universe, but on a much smaller scale. I've checked the nav computer. The bad news is we didn't make it home. The good news is we're still in the same universe as the Solano. Hell. Blue Comet. The builders of this artifact had some very advanced knowledge of fluid dynamics and weather patterns. The entire inner surface of this massive artifact is covered in an artificial tropical biome. An interconnected lattice of small islands is punctuated by shallow seas. It's clearly been rendered habitable at great effort. But apart from some simple plant life and a single-celled aquatic creature, it's uninhabited. The large towers are producing varying air flows. I suspect without them, the inside surface would be experiencing typhus. Typhus. Tried to mix typhoon and force. Typhoon force winds. There could be a great deal to discover here. But the millions of square kilometers would take decades to explore. This massive structure is an incredible feat of engineering. Based on the composition, it looks like remnant tech. This planet is periodically swept with sandstorms, where individual particles break the sound barrier, creating an audible crackle. By audible, I mean producing vibrations we can detect from space via refraction. 
At least we got us a gate, so that's good. Comet coming up over here. That fast moving object was a comet. If we can get close enough, we may be able to get some interesting data. Okay, so we know it's circles. It's its apex there. Yeah, we cheesing it, boys. I don't give a shit. We should hit it right about here. Like a boss. Trace neutronium particles in this comet suggest the environment of the system is not natural. Influenced by engineering on a massive scale. Oh, you don't say. The giant ring world give that away? Pyrrhix, you're a genius. Early civilization thought comets were portents of significant events. Later, we figured out they were chunks of rock and ice from the periphery of a star system. Now, so we go back here and we just try to hunt down some of these little shits. Like this little shit. Why are you running? Analysis of their structure can give us a detailed record of the star system's evolution. Not feeling generous today, eh? All right. That's fine. Bring it on, cupcakes. the cannon, okay? I'm not asking for much here. half of a deep space vessel severed from its bridge by heavy weapons damage. The wing computer sensor array is mostly intact. The gravity waves they were studying have the characteristics of a hypothesized collapsar. A collapsed neutron star turned into exotic matter. We've only ever encountered one in our own universe. And they... We've never encountered one in our own universe. And they've been assumed to be impossible. The logs are missing, apparently jettisoned along with the ship's locator bacon. But the sensor array has some interesting data, presumably from whatever they were studying when attacked. An incredibly dense object with a unique energy signature. So she can just show up anywhere after you've already discovered it all? Shit. That's annoying. 
You, come here, let's chit chat. Why are you running? Big stone mile. Oh, whoa. All right. So that allows us to get a fixed gun. Oh, we want to go down here. Who gets said fixed goon? Yeah, go around it. It's fine. Greetings, we are the Gror year. We have made contact with the representatives at Selena. You are Commander Rask of the Atlas? Yeah, that's it. Eh? The Gror year and the Ermamir have similar naming conventions for some reason. Kind of weird. We understand you are an explorer of this space. We too are seekers of knowledge, but we have been here much longer. We're happy to share our learnings and hope you will share with us. We'll share what we can. Wonderful. We are ha we are happy to share what we know. What can you tell us about these remnant artifacts? Wondrous things. All, of course, know the great gateways used by the Fallen Empire to main con maintain control, whose shibboleths are now jealously guarded. Most say the Empire built them. It is true the Empire was capable of great things, like these flingers that connect local systems, but we believe the gateways are much older. And we've heard of other artifacts, much larger, and with their own secrets. Giant devices of limitless power. Unbreakable yet broken vessels. Worlds, surrounding worlds, and more. If you find any such things, we will hope you will share with us. The pre-translation structure suggests they not just heard of some of these, but probably observed firsthand. What can you tell us about the Ermir? They are a brutish mercenary race, trustworthy, but only if you have the most copper. We have had occasional dealings with them, but prefer not to. We encountered a fast-moving object with a long trail. Do you know what it was? Ah, the emissaries. Some regard them as an omen of good luck. There are other stories of travelers who followed them to their demise. Where those stories could have come from is as mystery as the emissaries themselves. Such is the nature of superstition. We have detected them briefly on our sensors. I suspect they are probes of some kind. Buy the random artifact off of them. Fixed gun. Mount. Contaminated object. Magnetically sealed device. Likely used to isolate biological hazardous 
organisms during transport. Commodore Yu, I just read Lieutenant Avery's mission report on the Raider factory. Excellent work. There's still an open question as to whether the appearance of these Red Raiders was somehow caused by our presidents or is coincidental to it. But the important thing is the threat is less pressing. Again, good work by you and your crew. When the wormhole collapsed, Atlas wasn't the only Starcom vessel on this side. An archaeological ship, the Alethia, has been investigating nearby systems. She's well overdue. I want you to see what the delay is. It's a bit of a trek, I'm afraid. You may want to optimize your ship for deep space speed. Lieutenant Milton may have some suggestions. I have questions about the alien factions. One of Starcom's primary missions is to establish and maintain peaceful relations with new civilizations whenever possible. Normally, there are strict protocols regarding first contact, but under mitigating circumstances, they can be relaxed. The current circumstances are as mitigated as I've even seen. How shall we respond to hostile factions? My current directives, you are authorized to use all necessary force to defend Starcom personnel from immediate mortal threat, or to prevent the death or suffering of innocent lives at scale. Again, given the circumstances, I'm allowing you significant discretion. If we, say, inadvertently blast somebody in the face, can we repair relations? Incidents do happen, as a matter of practicality. Most spacefaring civilizations do not enter a state of permanent war. If two ships bump into each other, or a shot across the bow was aimed a little too low, time without hostility may heal those wounds. But in interstellar diplomacy, words are louder than actions. What you say will be interpreted as deliberate star composition. Ironically, missteps over the comm channel may be harder to undo than those in open space. Question about the crew's training. The command crew are the most important systems aboard a starship. They take great interest in my officer's training. What can I help you with? Should I focus on specialization or a well-rounded crew? Ah, the perennial debate. There are advantages to both. In general, having an expert is more likely to be useful during planetary surveys. A diverse skill set is more useful in ship operations. Take a look at the officer training branch in the research tree. That, that has some specific programs that we've come up with to maximize command crew performance. What skills do you think I should focus on? Difficult to say. I would expect a xenoculture, the study of alien thought and culture, to be of paramount importance during planetary surveys and alien negotiations. But it's less vital for shipboard operations. Tactics is useful when diplomacy fails. Observation is useful during surveys as well as exploring. Engineering is useful when things aboard your ship break. Biomed is useful when people aboard your ship break. Astroscience, I have found, helps with finding resources both in space and on planets. One more thing, you're exploring the unknown. It would be a surprise if you did not encounter an unexpected use for a skill. What do you think of these Gror year? Given our vulnerable position right now, I'm relieved that the second faction to have discovered our location isn't aggressively hostile. I maintain some skepticism that their motives are purely scientific curiosity. For now, consider them a source of potential information, but with caution. Atlas has uncovered more data, more scientific data than I expected from you. Reinforce this data-seeking behavior whenever you return with sufficient new research material, and I have time. I will answer one non-urgent question about our work. Not treating me like a lab rat would be another way to encourage data-seeking behavior. Let's call that our null hypothesis. Do you have a question? 
doesn't Starcom already have most of these research technologies? Of course, Starcom has these technologies. But as we've learned, the physical laws of this universe are very subtly different from ours. For example, vacuum permittivity is slightly lower, past the sixth significant figure. You would not want to try to fabricate a Mark II plasma cannon with 8.8 .8 to the X picofarads per meter tolerance here. So go find us data. So what did you learn from our trip through the gateway? Obviously, I was correct in believing it served a similar purpose to the wormhole stabilizers that Starcom constructed. It's not powerful enough to create a wormhole to our universe, but it can create local bridges in the space manifold. Whoever constructed it was technologically very advanced. Despite the lower power level, these gateways distort space much more efficiently than our stabilizers. It is possible if we can find more, more artifacts like this, we can open a wormhole home from this side. You found a puzzle object inside a sealed pyramid. What do you make of it? This universe has enough mysteries to keep my interest. I don't have time for toys and curios. If it's really confounding you, give it to Milton. I recall he is entertained by that sort of thing. We have managed to acquire parts of a new weapon design. Any suggestions for obtaining the rest? Assuming asking nicely isn't on the table, some parts can be obtained from ship debris. There's a bit of luck involved. The chance of sensitive component surviving a catastrophic hull collapse isn't high. If you can remove the module before that happens, your odds improve significantly. Any tips on speeding up our deep space travel? I assume you remember the basics of the Terulean drag metric? It's been a while, remind me. At post-relativistic speeds, the metric tends to bring ships out of warp. Conceptually similar to friction in the Newtonian system, although the underlying physics are completely different. The effect is more pronounced near stars, planets, or other objects that create entropic distortions in the warp manifold. Consequently, our ship drives are more efficient in deep space, a phenomenon referred to as the void effect. We can boost this effect with void control services, sometimes called wings, due to their shape. Of course, having a good drive-to-mass ratio helps the most with speed. Having a very wide ship design increases void distortions, but this effect is fairly small. We found this puzzle object. Dr. Rama said you might be interested. Did she? I suspect she meant it as a jab, but it's true. I'm quite fond of physical puzzles, probably why I gravitated towards ship design. I'll take a look at it in my spare time, of course. Holy shit. That was a lot of chit-chattery, man. Okay, I fixed my guns. Oil projection. Mark II guns. Lunar wane shafts. Increases the damage per energy of our fixed guns. Hyperthermal bolts. Targeting assist. Our fixed gun shots hit the modules or targets below a certain health percentage. They will continue through to whatever is behind. Or targeting assist. Yeah, boy, we just went from no weapons to almost done weapons. We need a bucket of titanium for that son of a bitch.
it's not pretty, but no. Yeah, no. Shit looks dumb as hell. That's a gold issue. I'm willing to make some silly designs, but even I have my limits. That's about as good as we can do for the moment. The nature of fixed guns makes targeting harder. The potential target is close to in range. I'll enable the firing tracers, which will highlight when a hit is probable. Let's see what we got up here real quick. Looks like some kind of asteroid field. Is it mining time? Pick up there. This is an unusually young asteroid field. Probably formed when a moon or planetoid broke up. There are maybe several valuable metal ores in these rocks. An old refinery converted to a landing outpost sits in a wide crater. A cluster of furry bipeds greets the survey team and, and offer a variety of resources. It quickly becomes apparent that their pricing has a healthy margin built in. Looks like it might be mining time. Oh, we got another comet. This comet has densities, high densities of iron oxide collected from primordial planets early during this system's formation. Hmm. All right, let me do some mining real quick. And what the hell are you? This is CXTA. We are carrying authorized cargo only. Our manifest has been logged with the Trade Guild. I'm Commander Rask of Starcom. We're on a peaceful exploration mission. That's good to hear. Is peaceful exploration a euphemism? What would it be a euphemism for? 
give us your cargo or we become less peaceful, maybe? You hailed us. Is this a shakedown or not? No, we really are on a peaceful exploration mission. Really? In that case, could you, you could show that by getting out of our way and letting us get on with this CXTA authorized delivery. What is the CXTA? I'm not sure how our mutual trans universal translators have chosen to represent our organization's name in your language. It is a com compression of a long list of prior organizations expressed in Hydrogen. We are a civilian cargo and passenger transport collective. Are you traders? Certainly not. We transport prearranged goods and services between worlds. We cannot enter into any ad hoc transactions. Such would violate our agreement with uh, the guild. Your ship seems slow for transports. Astute of you to notice. Many of our clients are suspicious of ships with military or espionage capabilities. Rather than deal with the delays of frequent inspections, we chose a strategy of conspicuous weakness. Credit the increased margins more than compensate for ransom payments and plunder. Is this a trade guild setup? I told you we only we are only carrying authorized cargo. Nothing off the books. Okay, so I do want to I do want to come up here and mine, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to the turrets to mine since you know. They're going to be a little bit easier to do that with than fixed guns. But actually, what I think I'm going to do right now... You know what? Nah, I'll get the mining done, see if anything neat comes from it. Pretty much the only change we really need. Okay, let me get some blasting, and I'll be back in a second. Alright, got some mining done. Heading back to base. While I was mining, we ran into an ancient quackulator. This is a primitive computer used for predicting orbits of celestial bodies. It's just like the Antikythera mechanism electronic and in space orange glyph sphere a small three centimeter sphere orange sphere covered with raised glyphs so analysis shows the markings are something of a hybrid between natural language and a machine language possibly this object was used to instruct AI okie dokely so with that out of the way, I'm going to take a break. You all stay safe out there. Have a good one. And we'll be back for more shenanigans. Out of bed.